I know you're sitting there thinking about, hmm, what is my New Year's resolution? Well, if you're like most people, it has something to do with fitness and nutrition. And with me is one of the foremost experts in fitness and nutrition, JJ Virgin. You have a television show. And, I do. Uh, TLC. Freaky and Eaters. Freaky and Eaters. And we're all a little bit of a freaky eater. And uh, yeah, and why are yeah. we freaky eaters? Well, there's so much wrapped around food, but I, I really believe because there's an addictive quality to a lot of these foods, so you get a little hooked on it, and then we use food to handle our stress and food to entertain, and you know, I mean, you can't really get away with it or, or from and, it, And right? to romanticize, right? Yeah. I mean, don't you do dates and Sure. I mean, every year around and, yeah. Valentine's Day, I do all these things for the media about the romantic Valentine's Day dinner, and I'm thinking there's a lot more romantic things than eating, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Y yeah, <laughs> but, but one thing leads to the next. But, but the difficulty, of course, with food is that some people tend to overeat mm. or eat improperly and therefore gain a lot of weight. Exactly. Well, there's and, more to it than that. Yeah. Right. And, and while it's overeating, I find, and, and, and people generally underestimate how much they're eating. We know that. They really should be tracking it. But I find for a lot of people, it's not eating what's best for them. Right, so eating smartly is the yes. important part, and that, of course, coupled with exercise. Right, but more than that, you know, diet and exercise are what we hear about all the time, but what mm -hmm. I always tell people is that our body is not a bank account. It's a chemistry lab and a history book. And it's not just what you eat, but it's how you eat it, when you eat it, and then your exercise, but even more importantly than that, stress, sleep, your genetics, all play a role in this. Okay, now I think, you know, at, by you know, by the year 2012, we all know this, but applying it and how to apply it correctly are different matters. Um, now, I still yeah. see, though, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so I, I see it as a more confusing situation than ever. Like, should I eat raw, vegan, right. paleo? Like, what do I do? <laughs> right? I, I agree. I mean, is, is being a vegetarian, um, is that proven to be healthier? I think being a vegetarian is a very poor decision. And I know that's, I like to say bold statements, uh -huh. but we are omnivorous and we need animal protein. The challenge is the quality of the animal protein. So the vegetarians and the vegans argue, oh my gosh, but all this tainted meat. Well, if you're eating grass-fed beef and wild fish and pasture-fed pork, it's very different than eating you know, corn-fed meat from slaughterhouses jacked up with hormones. So it's the type of fish, chicken, and meat and that we And same with, with produce. It's the quality of anything that you're choosing to eat makes sense. It, do, it does make sense and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, you have some interesting things on the I brought, table I brought props. here. Yeah, and you brought props. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, and you have one of my um, very bad habits uh -oh. here on the table, these pretzels. Uh -huh. and but, they're, but they're fat free. But they're, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm being facetious, oh, right? Oh, they're not fat free? No, they are fat free. Oh, they are. They're Z fat zero, free. Right? So you get like uh, zero uh, um, fat. fat, right? But, but what are they? Uh, they're dough, I guess. Yeah, right? so yeah. it's interesting because, Salt, you know, yeah. we always kind of get hooked on something with diets. For a while it was, you know, it's low carb, then it's fat free, then it's sugar free. I'm, it's, I'm waiting for all free. Why don't we just have the air diet? I'm sure it's coming. Mm -hmm. But the challenge with things like this, I actually look at these three things that most people think are healthy right. and say, if you pull these and a couple other foods out of your diet, you can lose a lot of fat, and it's about losing fat fast because these can create a potentially inflammatory response to your body and inflammation is its own risk factor for obesity. It's huge, it changes mm -hmm. your whole hormone response. All right, so this is yogurt. Yeah, Greek this style is, yogurt. This is identified for now, viewers. Greek yeah. style yogurt is a higher protein source yogurt. What I've identified over the years working with doctors is that dairy, eggs, gluten, soy, corn, and peanuts, a lot of people tend to react to them. By a lot, I mean 70% of the population or more tend to have a delayed food reaction to these. It makes their joints hurt, makes them tired, makes them a headache, makes them moody, makes them crave the very foods that are hurting them, and it creates this inflammation that shuts off fat burning and makes them want more. So is, is it bad for those people or for everybody? Well, it's, I can say this, specifically bad for those people, but I actually am very anti-gluten containing grains for everybody because I do believe for everybody it does damage your gut a little bit, which means you don't absorb your nutrients as well. So I'm not a fan of gluten at all, and I'll tell you something, if you pull out, now for someone who can handle dairy well and doesn't have skin problems, Greek style yogurt or some goat cheese could be great. For someone who can handle eggs, 
uh, we need to have you are what you eat eight, right? It's not just you are what you eat, but you want to make sure your chickens are being fed good feed. So you want to buy right? eggs that organic are eggs, organic right. eggs with cage free. Exactly. So they could handle eggs, but you know, for the most part, corn I pull out of the diet because it's genetically modified. 90% of the corn and soy crops are genetically modified. Right. Those go, right? right? And peanuts tend to be more inflammatory and can have some of that aflatoxin. They're higher with the potential mold on them. We aren't testing at the levels we really need to for that. So I pull that out. Um, and gluten I pull out. The other one that I find that people are just really misled on is agave. So I always want to do a shout out on that. It's, it sounds healthy. It sounds healthy. Well, <laughs> yeah. I was like, but it's a natural sugar. I'm like, there are a lot of things that are natural. Arsenic. There was all this stuff about the arsenic and apple juice. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. apples have arsenic in them. So therefore, apple juice, which we shouldn't drink juice anyway. Right, but the, but the uh, what you're referring to is Consumer Reports did a story on the uh, arsenic and mm -hmm. I think uh, other chemicals in apples, a lot of which they say are from pesticides. Exactly. I mean, there's, and the challenge we have now with trying to find organic, apples are one of the, the um, dirty dozen. Like when you look at foods that you must buy organic, apples are one of them. Now, why is that? They're just a heavily sprayed crop. Right, and, and also, isn't it true that when you're talking about the, the dirty dozen, mm -hmm. that things without a thick skin that protect the, the fruit right. are more likely to have residue on pesticides. Like look at uh, which, avocados and bananas, right. you're like safe Oranges right would be a better, or watermelons, right. but, but on the flip side, strawberries would be Terrible. a, a target, better Celery. by organic. Yeah. Or wash them very good. No. No, can't, can't even wash them. You can't get it out. Right, it's in there, so don't, I mean, obviously it's better to wash it than not, right. but it's in there, you're not getting it out. Well, I mean, they say to soak it in, in bleach. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna die <laughs> from bleach point, poisoning. this is just wrong. Yeah, yeah. You get sick from but that. Back to yeah. agave, this one's gotten all this popular press. It's, you know, it's, it's low on the glycemic index, but it turns out it's very high in something called fructose. Higher in fructose than high fructose corn syrup actually is. And our body handles fructose different than any other sugar. It's one that leads directly to insulin resistance, high blood pressure, but it's just like when you eat fructose, you store fat. That's what I want people to think of. It's just like you might as well just paste it wow. on. So what do you what do you do if you don't want to, uh, if you like sweet things? Mm -hmm. um, what about your sugar substitutes? You know, it's interesting, and I brought a little tasting strip for you to try because taste is very genetic. In fact, we say taste is really our nutritional gatekeeper. And some people have a sweet tooth genetically. I don't, I feel very fortunate mm -hmm. on that. But the people who do, you know, you're not gonna not eat sweet if you have a sweet tooth. So you do, I, I like people to retrain their sweet tooth and appreciate wild main blueberries and strawberries. I hate artificial sweeteners hate them for a variety of reasons. Number one, I think if you eat sweet, you crave sweet. And that instead of retraining your taste buds to appreciate berries, you're retraining your taste buds to want sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And, but they are retrainable, you, you say? To an extent. I mean, like, again, taste is very genetic. I tend to be one of those super tasters. I don't like real bitter food. So, I mean, I'm only going to be able to work with that so much. Mm -hmm. There's certain things I'm never going to like. But I can train myself to like things like, I never used to like avocados, I love them now. I like green tea, didn't used to like it. So you can train yourself because exposure equals preference. And you can train yourself to appreciate sweet and use things like cinnamon and vanilla and berries, but artificial sweeteners actually cause a phenomenon called calorie dysregulation. Which is? Which is, uh, they took mice and they fed them sugar water and then they let them eat and they ate to maintain their weight. And then they went back and they gave them aspartame sweetened water and let them eat. Again, they ate to maintain their weight. And then they went back to the sugar water and then they overate because they lost the ability to correlate the degree of sweetness to the amount of calories. It's sort of that pizza mm -hmm. diet soda thing we see going on. Right, so, right? You, so you don't recommend artificial sweeteners at all. It well, doesn't really save calories. You know, actually, it was an interesting study. I wish I could give you the direct stats, but basically they found people who had one diet soda a day were more overweight, had the tendency to be overweight more than person who drank a regular soda. So I do not recommend them. Besides, mm -hmm. they wreak havoc on your bones. The phosphoric acid leaches calcium out of your bones. Uh, sucralose actually can make you build up bad gut bacteria and bad gut, too much of this bad gut bacteria, you know, we've got more bacteria than cells. Right. Too much of the bad stuff actually extracts more calories from the food you eat and stores it as fat. Well, you know, so much of this <laughs> is so contrary to, you know, some yes. of the things we believe. In fact, we have 
a little quiz that we're going to give our viewers, mm -hmm. a little true and false quiz. So we're going to put the questions up on the screen. So we'll screen make you do the quiz since they can't chime okay, in. Okay, I'll, I'll take my best guess okay. and you can uh, you Of course, can I've given you me. a couple hints already. That wasn't <laughs> fair. Okay. Hey, I, I, okay, am I supposed to read that far? Okay. Wish I can. There okay. we go. It's Thank up. you. Restrict uh, fat, do you, restrict fat intake and choose low and no fat options when possible. Um, now this isn't really true or false, right? I mean, well, it's, it's a yes or no. A yes or do no. you? I try, yes, I do try to. Now, why do you do that? <laughs> I do that because I do, um, I think less calories are better than more. Calories count, but where they come from counts more. And when I talked earlier, I talked about reactive foods creating inflammation in the body that can cause uh, stress hormones to rise, which makes you store more fat around your waistline. It causes insulin and leptin resistance, which makes you hungrier and better at storing fat and worse at burning it off. So one of the key things to do is control inflammation, and one of the key ways to do that is by eating fat. And so, I'm not going to say, this is not a serving size, by the way. Right. This is a serving size. Okay. But raw nuts and seeds, not peanuts, cold water fish. This is one. Look how pretty this is. This is Malaysian palm fruit oil. It's actually the, it's a sustainable oil. It is the number one used oil in the world except for here. For cooking? It's, you can cook it at a high heat right. and it doesn't oxidize and it also helps reduce inflammation. It's very rich in antioxidants. We know antioxidants, which is why I have antioxidants here too. These are a little, another Malaysian super chew antioxidant product with all these wild fruits in it like dragon fruit but antioxidants that are in both of these help reduce inflammation so it's a one-two punch of making an oil change because more omega-3s that you get from things like fish help reduce inflammation and then mm -hmm. antioxidants the oil thing is very confusing to me like which oil is good which oil is bad I mean uh, let's the just make this oil, easy the olive oil we'll make yeah. it easy okay. these are the ones coconut is one of me it's the most amazing superfood out there I have coconut milk in my shake every day it's got medium chain triglycerides they help you burn fat it is a saturated fat it will not raise your cholesterol that's really silly mm -hmm. stuff it's one that you want to cook with high heat you cook with Malaysian palm fruit oil or coconut oil Extra virgin olive oil, another great one, monounsaturated. People genetically who are more of a Mediterranean genetic diet type, if they eat more of the monounsaturated, they lose more weight. And, and, and is this oil sold at most supermarkets? This is health food stores, specialty stores. I can't wait till it's mm -hmm. all over the place. Like a Whole this Foods is or type of Whole thing, Foods yeah. types of places. And I mean, you can just, you know, colors give a lot of way. Like pink, wild pink salmon. You know how they're dyeing the farm raised salmon? Right, right, right. That's the, those are the antioxidants mm -hmm. there that you're seeing because the little fish is swimming at the top of the surface, the sun's beating down on it, and it's producing these antioxidants, right? Oh, so is, there, is there a difference between the pink and the red salmon? Well, you, the, the better the color usually, the brighter the color, the better in most things. That's oh, why I we see. tell people to eat from the rainbow of fruits and vegetables. Okay. Because you're getting, and you're also getting a wider variety of antioxidants, right? You know, purple versus right. red. All right. Um, so, okay, okay so, we, we so, hit that right, one. Right, so that well, yeah, means that the pretzels kind of are hmm. out the window. I think people need are not eating enough fat. It's, it's a, you know, it's very interesting. We cannot live without protein or fat or water. We can live mm -hmm. without carbohydrates. We've created a whole diet based on the one thing we can live without. Yeah, Italian restaurants. Um, number two, eat three meals and three snacks every day. Well, you know, you grow up, they tell you, hey, eat three meals a day, particularly eat a good breakfast. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I don't know about the three snacks. I don't eat the three snacks every day. And Which I, is why I, you look the way you do. Yeah, and I don't eat the three meals. I, I essentially eat uh, like really two meals. I tell people breakfast is clearly the most important. In fact, mm -hmm. what they found with the study was that people who ate four to 600 calories of breakfast lost more weight and kept it, kept it off. Breakfast, I say, sets the metabolic tone for the day. And so what, what would that key. be? What would your yeah, ideal Yeah, so that's breakfast? not a muffin, yeah. which is an adult cupcake. <laughs> My favorite breakfast is to do a shake. I teach people to start mm -hmm. the day with a shake. And so I do a, a, actually I do a pea rice shake because I don't do dairy or eggs or soy coming. Um, and then I do some chia seeds for the healthy fats, coconut milk, and berries. Is, is, is the, um, w with eggs, if you do like eggs, is it better to eat the whites and not the yellows, or how does that No, work? the yellows have phosphatidylcholine and vitamin E. They're great for you. Mm -hmm. You just want to soft boil them or poach them so you don't oxidize right. the yolk. And you don't want to eat them every day because classically eggs and dairy tend to be one that we can build up a sensitivity to, and then that causes that inflammation. If you can handle eggs, they're one of my favorite foods, as long as you're getting the organic ones. But they should be rotated into your diet, mm -hmm. not eaten every single day. And what about after the other two meals? 
Well, and I want to say one other thing about breakfast. We don't have to eat breakfast food for breakfast. If you look at most breakfast foods, they're dessert. Well, my kids eat pizza for breakfast. Uh, better than cereal milk. <laughs> really? You know, uh, close, but at least we got some lycopene in the tomatoes. Um, my kids eat chicken. They eat chicken breakfast sausage. They eat fruit. We don't have cereal and milk. And, and why don't you have cereal? Because cereal is just generally it's got a lot of it's gluten, gluten containing grains with sugar and milk. So all you're getting is a big huge carb load. And when you have that big huge carb load with very little protein, you raise blood sugar, you raise insulin, and now you've just set the tone of the day of being in fat storing mode, not fat burning mode. And what about the fiber you get from cereal? The fiber's great. I mean, the way you want to eat is protein and fiber slow down stomach emptying, and they keep ghrelin suppressed so you're not hungry, and the healthy fats work in the small intestine to trigger your brain to know that you're full. So those things together work really well. So you're going to get the fiber from things like raw nuts and seeds and vegetables. You know, you can oh, throw okay. kale or spinach in your shake. So you want all of those things. Well, what's in your favorite shake? My favorite shake is pea rice protein, berries, a little bit of frozen spinach, chia seeds, and coconut milk. And I travel with my magic bullet. I had my shake this morning. Mm -hmm. So I do it every day. Magic sometimes bullet twice being a day. The, uh, the blender. You know, the little blender. Yeah, I know. When I heard that, I thought the same thing. Yeah, the, the, um, <laughs> and then what about the tea? Do you have a, a tea in the morning, green tea? This is now, you know, I said that it's eating, exercise, and then sleep, right. detox, and stress. And so, I start the day with a big Americano, I'm going to be honest. I do half decaf, but I, coffee and wine are my favorite food groups. Mm -hmm. However, after that, I go and have green tea. Why? We're all going to be under stress. Whenever I hear these studies about they looked at the stressed and the non-stressed group, I'm like, where was the non-stressed group? Where are those people? I've never met them. Yeah. Um, so they're I always look at, yeah, they're drinking red palm fruit yeah. oil. And they're taking, by the way, they're taking, this is actually from Malaysia. It's this centuries old product that they, the Malaysian government teamed cool. up with MIT. Tanaga? It's called Tanaga. It has mm -hmm. this, this um, ingredient in it called Tangat Ali that's been used for centuries by men and women in Malaysia. It was first for libido. But what they found is it helped them with their cortisol and testosterone levels, and it helped them have more vitality, more energy, and tolerate stress better. And so the Malaysian government brought it out to study it at MIT. They figured out how to take the Tangat Ali and standardize it into another, uh, they call it Feista. I mean, I was like, could we do some American names here? Uh, but it's launched out as Tanaga. So I have people for handling stress. First, I say control this because most of stress right. is here. It's like, you know, this self-talk. And I go, stop worrying. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Drink green tea. This is my afternoon. And then take a little Tanaga each day. And, and this is, what is it, a dropper or is it a liquid? It's a, it's a uh, little pill. And cool. you can get uh -huh. them at like GNC, vitamin shop, all those places. But Okay. Yeah. All right, so, uh, all right, well, we never got okay. past, uh, how about dinner? I mean, do okay, you so believe in three I teach meals? people to yeah. eat by the clock, eat within an hour of waking up, eat every four to six hours, stop eating two to three hours before bed. So that means breakfast, lunch, maybe a snack and dinner. When you're eating every couple hours, like every two to three hours, you eat, you raise blood sugar, you raise insulin, you shut off fat storing. We don't need to eat every two to three hours. Just like you said, you know, you, you should be able to go four to six hours if you've got protein, healthy fats, and fiber. You shouldn't be hungry. Um, include a soy-based food product. Uh, uh, should are you, doing, you? Uh, are you doing that? I don't, uh, other than uh, putting soy sauce on my sushi, okay. I probably don't. I'm thrilled to hear that because yeah. for men, they found that men who did daily soy lowered the testosterone levels and had smaller brains. Okay, there's a joke there, but I, I know, say I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to okay. say something about size, but I'm not going to say it. I'm okay. <laughs> Only so, eat natural sweeteners. Uh, we talked we about this, like one. honey and agave. Okay. Choose the light and sugar-free style products. And we talked a little bit about this, that the sugar-free products Well, you are, know, if you're taking the sugar out, something's got to go in. So it's usually either carbs, which, by the way, the minute something goes in your mouth, whether it's sugar or carbs, it's going to be, unless it's fructose, it's going to be metabolized the same. So it doesn't matter. Starch, mm -hmm. sugar, same. But right. By the way, you've written a book about this whole thing, right? Well, I wrote it, Six Weeks to Sleeveless and Sexy, which it, it, it's... Six, say, it, say it slowly. <laughs> six six weeks, weeks to Sleeveless and right. Sexy. Okay. And it really, it's about how to eat, how to exercise, sleep and stress, and then also how to dress for, to show off your okay. arms. Right. Uh, okay. Get six to 12 servings of carbohydrates daily and focus on eating whole grains. I don't, I certainly don't have nearly that many uh, servings of Good. carbohydrates and you wouldn't uh, look the way you do if you did I don't know if I eat enough whole grains though 
if you're not eating whole grains, you're eating enough. How's that for oh, a wow. bold okay. statement? This really should say get five to ten servings of non-starchy vegetables eating from the rainbow. That would be the ideal statement there. The I have people eat clean lean protein at each meal, grass-fed beef, uh, that pea rice protein in the shake. Um, if you can handle eggs, that would be eggs, wild fish. Mm -hmm. Some, a lot of non-starchy vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, red peppers, some healthy fats, which we talked about, avocado, olive mm -hmm. oil, raw nuts and seeds, and then a little bit of a high fiber starchy carb. Now that could be an apple, could be a little bit of a sweet potato, I'm talking half a cup, some lentils, black beans, quinoa. I tend to pull people off of gluten, and I will tell you that if you are listening to this and you've got, you're tired, your joints hurt, your skin's not looking great, you look older than your years, you're bloated, you can't lose mm -hmm. weight, and you pull out gluten, dairy, eggs, corn, soy, peanuts, first of all, it's hard to get in trouble when you pull those out, and sugar, of course. But I see people lose five pounds in a week when they do that, and all these cravings yeah. go away. The first three days, they're not they're they're impossible to live with, and I'm getting these <laughs> nasty emails. I go, yeah. just go through it, go because they crave those foods. Okay, let's cruise through these because I want to talk to you about exercise. Uh, eat three or more servings of fruit daily. Um, two. Yeah, I, two. Two. Low glycemic berries, okay. apples. Okay. Uh, only eat food from health food stores like Whole Foods. We're talking, you're, you're really referring to um, organic. Well, but here's the thing. There's a halo effect when you go into a place like Whole Foods. All of a sudden, you weren't eating cookies, and now you're Whole Foods, and you think, oh, look, they've got healthy uh, cookies, right, yeah. right? So one of the things I want people to understand is just because it's in Whole Foods doesn't mean that it's healthy. Got it. Drink lots of pure spring water with my meals. Now, how do you, you know, this is so confusing to me. What, you know, you get a bottle of water, uh, you know, you don't really know what it is, where it came from. Right. Um, well, this right here is a phthalate factory. So, what you do. It's a what factory? Phthalates, you know, the chemicals. Oh. Like, uh -huh. So, what you want to do with water is you want to wake up in the morning and you want to drink 16 ounces of pure spring water, filter it. Then, 30 to 60 minutes before a meal, not any closer to the meal, you drink another 8 to 16 ounces. You don't drink water with your meals, limit your fluid to about eight ounces so you don't dilute your stomach acid and, and impair digestion. And then at right around bedtime, an hour before bedtime, if you start to get hungry, have eight ounces of water. Great study from University of Chicago found that people who had eight ounces of water before bed, 100% of them shut down their hunger pangs. You never hear that. Right. So that's, you know, people always say, oh, drink more water. But if you don't have a specific schedule, mm -hmm. it's sort of like exercise. You know, right. it doesn't happen. What else can you drink other than water? Fruit juices or? Fruit green? juice is right there with agave. So I tell people no juice unless it's straight greens. Most of those green mm -hmm. drinks have a banana thrown in for good measure there. So right. if it's straight greens, fine. But other than that, water, sparkling water. Gatorade. And green tea. Oh, come on. Okay. Come on. <laughs> now you're just egging me on. All right. Um, <laughs> Do cardiovascular, okay, here's exercise. All right. Okay, I mean, we all know we need to exercise three or more times a week. Uh, I mean, I try, I do it every day. Um, Which is what you really want to do. I try Let's to mix up the kind of exercises I do. Okay, and that's awesome too. So here's the deal with exercise. Number one, we all should be moving more, okay? Easier to do in Las Vegas mm -hmm. because you can't get from point A to point B in any of those casinos without going two miles. But we should be moving about an hour a day. Just moving, mm -hmm. regular walking, right? right? But that is not exercise. In order for something to be considered exercise, you must get hot, you must sweat, and it should hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that would be like, you know, not restorative yoga, but real hard S yoga. Sweating is good for you, right? Sweating is critical. Yeah. It's way we, one of the ways we detoxify. So that's burst style aerobic training, that's resistance training, that's sprinting. Anything that's hard that gets you out of breath is what you need to be doing. Okay. Uh, and I kind of couples with take a long walk every day, yeah, so, keep moving. So yeah. I like people to do long, slow distance and not count it as exercise. For exercise, it's not this moderate endurance training. I don't actually have people jogging and cycling and all that. That creates more oxidative stress. It's very aging. I want you to do easy workouts, but don't count them as exercise. And then I want you to do, you know, the, the hard stuff for short amounts of time. Right. Because, you know, if you're doing it hard, you can't do it for long. And right? the easy stuff also helps with the stress. Hugely. Right. You get out in the sun so you get the vitamin D too. Okay. Now, sleep. Last, or last yes, item. And your probably, Achilles and, and heel. The most, yes, it is my Achilles heel. I find it hard to sleep um, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, and the, what are the alternatives? You can, uh, you can take sleeping medica medication, you can try to meditate, you can try to, I don't know. Well, not here's what I'll tell you about sleep. Yeah. If I was going to pick one thing, if, if today you had me on and, and, and everyone listening said, I will do one thing that woman says, mm -hmm. 
sleep would be my top choice for weight loss, for slowing down the aging process, for impacting overall health, for not being cranky. You know, everything, sleep is critical. Just one poor night of sleep, the next day you're more insulin resistant, leptin resistant, your cortisol's higher, your serotonin's lower. What do all those words mean? You crave sugar and carbs, you're hungrier, you don't burn fat as well, you store more fat around your waist, your sex drive goes down, you can't think straight, you might even be mean. And you, and you don't feel like exercising. And you don't feel like exercising because you're too you're tired. tired. I hear from people all the time, I need something for energy. And, I, and my question always is, how is your sleep? Because it makes no sense to give something for energy. And by the way, energy should really be from living by the plate and eating the right types of foods. That's where we get our energy. But why would I give someone something for energy if they're not sleeping well? Let's fix the problem. And the problem mm -hmm. is sleep. And I find for a lot of people, now maybe not you because it sounds like you have like some really wonky sleep stuff going on, but yeah. uh, we'll talk about that. So for a lot of people, they just don't see the priority, and so they don't make time for sleep. And so they're, you know, it's, it's harder now than ever because we've got our phones and our right. laptops, and right. we're like buzzing around, and we think all of a sudden we can shut it all down and go to sleep. And you can't. It's very stimulating to your neurons. So I tell people to use their alarm clock, which is why we have that alarm clock over there, and set it for an hour before they should go to sleep to power down, to right. shut it off. And that takes a lot of discipline. <laughs> that includes television. Television, iPhone needs to go away. Okay to read. Get in the bath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then right. I tell people that's the big thing to do is read a good, not great book. Like there's certain things I can't read at night because it gets my brain going. Right, so right, I have to right, read, right, yeah. I admit it, chiclet. I read mm -hmm. really stupid stuff at right. night because I just, it puts me to sleep. Right. Hey, if people want more information, they can. JJVirgin.com. JJVirgin.com. They can catch you, I guess, on uh, TLC. And, yep. And you have a new book you're writing? I have a new book. We just are changing the title on it, but basically it is about how you remove these reactive foods and you can lose fat fast, like five pounds okay. in the first week. Okay, so for more information, contact or you can Google her, JJ Virgin. Yep. Thank you, JJ. Thank you.